Hey guys, and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So, last time we finished off by setting up our polyethylene. We're up to about 15 buckets by now. However, as you can see, I've had to disable some of these machines as we don't have quite enough power. I did add some more steam turbines, however, this is the maximum that we can support with this boiler setup and the steam production we have. Um, so we can't power everything at once. I've had to disable this blast furnace as well. So yeah, power is definitely our number one priority at the moment. But I've also tidied up this area a little bit more. Compacted these things and used the slightly larger chests to put in between the, the regular ones just to squeeze things up a little bit more. And that was because I upgraded the cables to 4x cables. Put in more batteries in our battery buffer here. And same with the MV side, I've also upgraded these to both lith lithium and there's a few sodium ones in there. But yeah, even with the batteries, we're going to need some more power. I also did make this extruder. This is a very, very, very useful machine for uh, gears and we can also make tinkers tools with this as we can't make them the, the default way with the because we don't have access to the smeltery, obviously. To fix our power problems, I'm going to be pumping oil and eventually making diesel after some refining. Um, so to do that, we're going to use a fluid pump, which I've already crafted. We're going to use this spectre coil to power it. And I got this from a quest reward for making a CEU. I've already crafted that as well. It's somewhere down in the base. And right now I'm just making up some shifting stars. I'm just batch crafting these as these are used in these fluid transfer nodes. And these can wirelessly transfer uh, fluid across dimensions, I believe. We can't quite make the ender tanks yet, otherwise I would have used these. So these fluid transfer nodes uh, will do the trick. And with these shifting stars, I can make uh, some other th notable things as well. Like the Clayconia, I think we're going to be using this. So it's going to be nice to have some extra cra crafted. Although this did eat quite a bit of steel, so I'm debating whether it was actually worth it at this point because I am super low on iron. So there is our first fluid transfer node. And I think this is part of one of the quests. I just haven't unlocked it yet. It's up here. Yeah, it's going to give us a large drum. We'll get to the quest in a second though. And I think I'll just make the two and leave the rest as shifting stars. So we have everything to pump oil. Now we actually have to find some. So I've got a bit of exploring to do. I think it the mo it's most common in oceans and in deserts, so I'll, I'll look there first. Aha, I found some oil here. I'm just going to wait till daytime though, as it's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> Okay, so I waited till day and we're out at the oil fields. There's actually two next to each other, so when this runs out, actually there's quite a few in the area. I uh, couldn't see because it was quite dark, but yeah, I've got our fluid pump set up here. And then powered with the spectre coil. So this is pumping our oil and then it's coming out through a fluid conduit and into a fluid transfer node. And then to transfer this, we have to use GPS markers. And we have to actually shift click this on our inventory or a fluid tank or whatever. Uh, I did forget to do that, so I'm gonna have to take a trip back and then come back here and put the GPS tracker back in. But then after we do that, we've got our oil and the first step is completed. Okay, so now that we have oil, we have to actually process it. And there's a few different steps to this. And as you can see here, I've already started setting this up. So let me just explain what, what we've got going on here. It's not quite finished yet, but I've got the, the bulk of this is finished. So step one is to insert our mineral chickens. This is going to go into our compressor. These are going to compress the eggs into mineral crystals. And this gives us sawdust, carbon dust, plant balls, methane. But what we're after is the mineral resin. These are just byproducts that we're going to store. So the items go in these barrels here. I almost call them drawers again. <laughs> the items go in these barrels and the fluids are filtered with ender fluid conduits here with some ender IO filters on here for steel drums. And so we've got mineral resin in the bottom, methane in the top. The mineral resin then goes to a chemical bath, which is being supplied canola seeds from a canola chicken. 
And then this mixes with our mineral resin and crystallizes the canola seeds, which go into a mixer. And then this has to be mixed with our oil. So I have to quickly run and set the, the GPS on this drum here. And then we're going to put uh, two fluid pumps on there. So these electric pumps are not just used in crafting recipes. They can also be used on Greg Tech machines. So that's what we're going to use them for here. The oil, like I said, is going to be in this steel drum. And then we can either place it on the mixer itself or on the drum. So I'm going to put it on the mixer and then we can use a Greg Tech screwdriver. Right click the, the side you equipped it on and then set it to import mode. Remember this is going to give us crystallized oil. So that's going to be auto output and set the side Yep, to the right hand side to the steel drum. So now there's only two steps left. We have to distill it twice half into heavy fuel and half into light fuel. Actually, is it half? This is five to one. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out how we're gonna do this. But either way, we need both light and heavy fuel and, and then we mix that into diesel. So I have to make two distilleries and a mixer. And also put the GPS on this. Alright, so after a trip to the nether, as I'd run out of blaze rods, I made uh, three distilleries. I only needed two, I made one by accident. Uh, and also, there is our mixer. Aha, uh -huh, so now we get to the problem where we need to mix them in not the same ratio. And we get, also get different amounts from the distillery. So we get 57 millibuckets of light fuel and 18 millibuckets of heavy. Oh, but we do need more heavy fuel than light fuel. Uh, does this math work out? I'm actually, I'm not sure about that. But I think what I might do is, to avoid complicating this, I might just let it backfill the heavy, or sorry, the light fuel. And then any excess is going to produce heavy. Because I think this, uh, this setup is going to be overkill for the power we're going to consume right now. And then later down the line we're going to build a distillation tower anyway. And get rid of these single distilleries, I think. So for now I'm going to just um, ignore the fact that it's different ratios and let the machines backfill. So I did hook up the oil in here and we have 29,000 buckets. I don't know if it's actually run out. I don't, I'm not really sure why it stopped. I'll have to investigate that. But that's mixed with the crystallized seeds and give us our crystallized oil, which is now in this drum. And then this is going to be round robin on brown. And we'll send that into these two distilleries. And these both need some program circuits. So one will be on zero, one will be on configuration one. So this is giving us heavy fuel, and this one should be light fuel. There we go. Sometimes there's a bug with these circuits where you have to just open the, the GUI. I don't know why it does that. But yeah, there's light fuel, heavy fuel. So the last step is to mix them. And the, the very last ender fluid conduit here is going to do us. So we're going to output this on blue channel, both of them, and input on blue on the mixer. And now we're getting diesel. Awesome. And now I accidentally have a full reservoir of crystallized oil. I have to get, I have to get rid of this. Okay, so this setup could be a little bit cleaner, but it's uh, it's what we got to work with right now because I'm limited by the ender fluid conduit amount that I have. But later on, I think we will rebuild this and refine it a bit more. Um, so now there's a few quests I'd like to clean up. We have to get an oil cell, a crystallized oil cell. This is just a check mark, and then a diesel cell. Alright, there's crystallized oil. Diesel. And there's actually some duplicate quests in the... What is this? The chemistry tab? So th this actually gives us some more conduits, which is nice. And it wants light fuel, heavy fuel, uh, we've got our diesel already, nice. So we're back at the oil fields here, it turns out we're actually out of oil here, I think. The, this cobblestone pillar went all the way up to here. Uh, so I guess it built this when it mines the oil out, so I'm going to move it over to one of these other ones. Oh, that's also a quest.
We can also grab some other quests that we missed in the chemistry tab. So we have this one for the mineral crystals. And then it asks us to make to get methane. So we can grab one of those. There's the quest. We got a quest for the chemical bath. And then there's also an MV chemistry section here. But there's one for... I guess that was the chemical bath again. One for a chemical reactor, which actually gives us two more. Which is quite nice. And there's also a quest for biomass. Next quest is for the distillery. Well, I do have an extra one of those. There we go, quest complete. Oh, this gives us 64 biomass. That's pretty cool. Next one is for polyethylene. We have that already. Ethanol. There's one cell of ethanol. And the next one is for ethylene. However, we are blocked by something. I want sulfuric acid. Oh, there's sulfuric acid there. But it also wants, what, hydrogen sulfur dust. We have some of that. And here, making rubber. There's a quest for that one. And then that unlocks the ethylene cell, which we have somewhere. Maybe I actually broke the ethylene. I had a machine here with some ethylene in it. I think I maybe broke it. This quest here says it's valid uh, with either ethylene or polyethylene, but it's not completing with the polyethylene in my hand. I'm not sure why that is. Okay, we're just going to make it again. So ethanol, sulfuric acid, and no power. <laughs> okay, there is our cell of ethylene. And that completes the quest. And then it wants polyethylene sheets, which we need the... Oh, it wants us to make an air collector. For now, let's just uh, finish off this little quest tab here, which is to make diesel generators. So it actually gives us one for free. We get another 64 buckets of diesel. And then... 64 buckets of oil. Wow, this is very generous quest rewards. Oh, and the quest text down here says you can run it in your boilers to make steam. Or in diesel generator. I didn't know you could make steam with this. But it doesn't seem very worth considering we're getting the steam just from logs. And it's basically free. Uh, so I don't think we'll be doing that. But we will definitely be setting up a few more of these diesel generators. And in fact, I think what we're going to do is set it up more or less the same as the steam turbines here. So we'll have diesel generators uh, here and then here and stacked up. And then I'll put the battery buffer just before the machines. I'm going to make up a, a few more of these diesel generators and move this setup around. We'll also have to somehow fuel these, so we have to move the diesel from that mixer there. But I'm thinking just for now, since I made an extra fluid transfer node, I'm just going to use this. Since we're going to be rejigging this whole system anyway. Alright, I crafted up three more advanced diesel generators. These are actually fairly expensive at this point, to be honest. Uh, there's quite a lot of components in that goes into this. But I have three more. We're going to hook these up. And I've moved the battery buffer over a little bit more. Uh, so the battery buffer is this block here. And then the transformer is coming from here. This is still being powered by steam as well. So we're using both diesel and steam for this. And then this stone drum has got our diesel inside. And that is hooked up to this fluid transfer node. Which has the GPS marker in there. This has been exported on yellow channel. So now the diesel is just extracted via this fluid conduit. Just have to hook up the other two. These are now all getting diesel. Nice. And we're filling on power. It's filling up our batteries. We're now way over producing on power, which is a, a good problem to have. I don't think that'll last very long, though. Nice. We are in a really good spot here, I think. So next step for us is going to be to continue to put our polyethylene to work and work on the next tier of circuit. Or the better, yeah, next tier of circuit, which is these integrated processors. So we had a look at these last time, and these were blocked by the plastic circuit boards. However, now we do have polyethylene. We just have to solidify it into sheets, which is easy. We will also have to set up sulfuric acid again. But remember, we can do that just sulfur and water. And then we also need transistors, which is polyethylene in an assembler with tinfoil and silicon plates. And also capacitors, which is polyethylene sheets and aluminium foil and the foil we just get from the metal bender so i think the plan i was considering fully automating these things but long term we don't actually use these capacitors or transistors to make the circuits 
we're going to eventually switch to SMDs and then uh, SOCs. So long term, we actually don't need them. So I'm not going to fully automate them. I'm just going to batch craft with them. On second thought, I was having a look at these SMDs and how far off we were from getting these. And we can actually make all of these now. Well, they, with the exception of the capacitor. Yeah, the capacitor, we can't quite get this as we don't have either PVC or silicon rubber. But like the rest of them, we could actually just switch straight to SMD circuit uh, components and start using these for our circuits. So I think instead of trying to make the transistors and resistors, I'm just going to switch to batching up these SMDs. That does mean we will need to make polyvinyl chloride. So let's let's just have a look at this and just see what exactly we need for it. So let's pin as we go here. So polyvinyl chloride we get from air or oxygen. Oh, we can also do polyethylene and chlorine. Maybe this will be better since we're not making ethylene anymore. Since we bypass the ethylene step with the chicken. Because normally you do ethylene and chlorine and you split your polyethylene production before you turn it all into polyethylene. But with this recipe we can do, we can make chlorine, which we're not making yet, but we'll get to that. And then mix it with our polyethylene and that will give us polyvinyl chloride. And then we just have to fluid solidify that. Let me think about this a little bit more. Yeah, you know what? I think we will go with this one. Um, so we have to make cl chlorine though. And to make chlorine, we have to... I remember this being a really big pain in Omni Factory. Since there was no easy way to get salt. But in this pack, we have the thermal evaporation controller. We're going to make this multi-block convert water into brine. Centrifuge brine into salt water. And then electrolyze that into chlorine and then mix it with our polyethylene and that'll give us PVC. Easier said than done though. <laughs> so I'm going to do some crafting and some preparations and then we'll get started with that. And after some crafting I think we're ready to move on. That actually did take me a long time to do that. I thought like oh I'll be five minutes just three machines but uh, no. Um, I found out I was out of iron and then out of coal and then I was out of bronze and so on. Anyways, first thing I want to do is convert our polyethylene here into the sheets. So one of the quest rewards, I don't remember exactly which which one it was, but it gave us this fluid solidifier for free. So I'm just going to use this. I'll put a transformer here, transforming down. And then all we have to do is pipe in our polyethylene. Insert on brown. And we're getting polyethylene sheets. Next, let's move on and make our brine. So... We've got this thermal evaporation uh, tower here. This took some circuits, uh, LV machine hull, and then this is what I used the bronze for. Some steel plates uh, in the assembler. Uh, and then the quest actually gives us 42 of these blocks, as well as a free fluid transfer node, which is really, really nice. I also made the resistive heater, which is going to speed things up quite a bit. I'm actually not sure where I should put this uh, multi-block. Maybe in the corner would be best, like right about, about here. So we've set up our thermal evaporation controllers. Uh, this is quite an annoying multi-block in that it's an even number. It's two by two on the inside and you can't really center it when you build odd. But the way this works is we input water, we're going to get brine out. This does produce brine automatically, but we're going to use this resistive heater I have on the back here to use RF to heat it up, and this will increase our brine rate. So to input the water, I've put a aqueous accumulator on the bottom here. I did test this with the valve on the underside, but it didn't actually take water for some reason, so I've had to switch it over to the side. Next thing we have to do, though, is power the, our resistive heater. Hmm, I'm wondering if it's worth run it off the MV line or if we can get away with doing it at LV and then maybe remove this connection here uh, since these uh, diesel generators will be able to handle the MV line and just completely disconnect this and that means we can route the power over there. I think what I'll do is take two of these steam turbines and then instead of routing power I'll route the steam and then put these directly on the heater or on the CEU I mean. Let's see, we can do one here and maybe one here. And then we'll run our steam underneath the floor here. And I'll have to get, grab some more pipes, so let me go and get some of those. 
Okay, it's all hooked up. I decided to move the turbines underneath here, and then I'm just running the Gregtech energy up through a blue steel cable into a CEU, and then into the resistive here. So I know that we can tweak the numbers on this. Right now, we're, it looks like we're inputting 40 RF a tick by default. Obviously, the more power we put in this, the more heat will, it will produce, and then the faster this evaporation tower will be. So I'll have to tweak that a little bit, but for now, I think this will, be, this will do us. So yeah, now that we're getting the brine, we have to centrifuge this. So instead of centrifuging it here, I'm going to do that on the MV line. So the quest actually gives us this fluid transfer node, which I will use here. And we'll put it just directly on this. Actually, no, we want this. It looks like it doesn't auto output. Okay. Well, we can fix that with a conduit. Too short. Before we centrifuge the brine, I think I'm going to work backwards here. So I'm going to start with the... Uh, the fluid solidifier, we're going to put another one here with a chest on top for PVC sheets. Um, just because I, don't, I want to work from left to right and I want to leave enough space here. We are going to start with a chemical reactor step. So this is going to take our chlorine and our polyethylene. So in fact, what I might do is... I think I'm going to replace this chest and conduit. And swap the output to this side and then we'll input from the top. And that way I can run the ender fluid conduit over the top here. And sorry if this seems a little bit disorganized and disjointed. It's, it's quite difficult to do this, all of this chemistry and try to keep it all concise and explain myself. Yeah, so this is going to round robin our polyethylene between this fluid solidifier. Which will solidify it into the sheets. And also into this chemical reactor. Okay, I think I've got it figured out here. So, we're going to put a tank here for our brine, and this is the start of the chain here. So for this, we're going to input this via a Gregtech pump once again. So this is going to centrifuge our brine and give us two different liquids. I have these filtered with the Ender IO filters, so the liquid lithium goes in the top drum. And I'll have to process this in a bit, but the one we're after is the salt water, which goes to the bottom. This is then going to be pulled in by another pipe. Uh, sorry, pump, which uh, will electrolyze the salt water, and this is what gives us our chlorine, which is being filtered on the bottom tank here. And then this also gives us a byproduct of hydrogen, which uh, I'm going to store here, but the excess is going to go to this trash can. And uh, just one thing to remember when you're doing fluid priorities, like I have this set to negative one priority, make sure you disable round robin as. Conduits don't respect the priorities when you have round robin enabled. And this also gives us sodium hydroxide, which I'm storing in a barrel here. Next step, I'm using an another pump here set to import. This is going to give us our chlorine. And then the polyethylene I just hooked up via the top here, which we're actually out of right now because I still haven't re enabled these after I upgraded the power. But as soon as we get these going again, we're going to make some more polyethylene. This will give us our polyvinyl chloride, and then with this, I don't think we need the fluids for anything, do we? No. We just need... Just sheets, isn't it? Or is it? do we need the ingots as well? I think it's just sheets, so I'm going to make another fluid solidifier for that. So it turns out I'm out of electric motors, I'm just trying to gather the materials to batch craft another stack of these things. But yeah, I know it's a lot of chemistry in the, in the last two episodes, but this is, this is Greg Tech. It's quite hard to make it interesting, but I'm doing my best here. I think next time though we will take a little break from Greg Tech and we'll I think we'll maybe continue our magic progression. Was what I was thinking. I want to get our Batania um progressed a little bit more. And I would also like to start blood magic. Okay, there is another stack of motors. And the other fluid solidifier. I've got the plate mold here. So all we have to do now is hook this up to the polyvinyl chloride. The blue channel. This is going to be import on blue. And we're making sheets. Awesome. Let's actually output these to the chest. So now these have to go through a chemical reactor as well as a metal bender to get our cl thin chloride sheets and the plastic boards. However, I think we're going to save that for tomorrow's episode. I would like to get this episode out and I'm kind of running out of time here. So 
If you have any feedback on the things we've set up today, let me know. And as I mentioned, we will probably be switching away from Greg Tech a little bit next time. And yes, I know this is <laughs> this is spaghetti right now, but it will be fixed later on. Don't worry. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for some more FTB interactions.